What makes one's life go best? What's the best philosophy today to live by that guarantees that one's life goes as best it possibly can? Perhaps there isn't a single perfect philosophy, but surely there is an idea that comes the closest. For centuries, humanity's best minds have thought and debated about what philosophy constitutes living the good life. Although many ideas have been put forth today, contemporary philosophers group the theories of well-being into three types. These theories are hedonistic theories, desire theories, and objective list theories. So in this video, I'll be exploring what each of these means and what we mean by well-being and the good life. Okay, so before diving into an explanation of each of these types of theories of well-being, it helps to understand what philosophers mean by well-being. Typically, when you hear the term well-being, this refers to someone's state of health, but the term is broader in philosophy. Well-being is most commonly used in philosophy to describe what is non-instrumentally or ultimately good for a person. It essentially means how well a person's life is going for that person. First, well-being doesn't mean just happiness, although it could encompass being happy. There could be things in life more important to the individual than just happiness. Also, well-being is a kind of value, a good-making property. Philosophers sometimes refer to it as prudential value. This value is uh, different than something like aesthetic value. When we look at a beautiful painting, the feeling it stirs in us is a kind of thing that's good for us, not good for the painting itself. Plus, when we contemplate what things make one's life go best, we're not focused on just the specific thing, but how it's intrinsically good or bad for a person. For example, we're not just deciding if water by itself is good or bad. Just how it affects us, for example, flooding our house, drinking it after being parched, having free access to it, etc. Okay, so now that we have a general idea of what well-being is, what's the best philosophy of well-being? Well, the philosopher Derek Parfit outlined each of these theories in his book, Reasons and Persons, where he asked, what would be best for someone, or would be most in this person's interest, or would make this person's life go for him as well as possible? First, there are the hedonistic theories of well-being, which include prudential hedonism and preference hedonism, among others. Prudential hedonism, which Parfit also called narrow hedonism, holds that all and only pleasure intrinsically makes people's lives go better for them, and all and only pain intrinsically makes their lives go worse for them. Although you've probably encountered pure hedonists in your life, prudential hedonism as a whole was a sort of a dead end in philosophy. Why? Well, we often pick things to experience in life that don't give us pleasure over those that do, like choosing to watch a sad drama over a comedy, attending a funeral, or starting our own business. We're fulfilling our desire here, yet it's not pleasure-seeking. In the place of prudential hedonism, Parfit suggests preference hedonism. On this view, one's life goes better if it contains more experiences of the kind that one desires. So now the key to living the best life is to choose the experience we want to have in the moment, regardless if it's pleasure-seeking or not. For example, when given the option between a vacation to the Bahamas or volunteering to help the elderly, the traditional hedonist will always choose the Bahamas vacation since there are more pleasures and less hard work. But if we have the preference to feel altruistic, like a good person, over just pleasure, the preference hedonists can now choose to volunteer if that's what they think makes their life go best in the moment, even though there will be hard work involved. And next there is desire satisfaction theory, which claims one's life goes best to the extent that their desires can fulfill. Here the key to the best life possible is to distinguish which desires are the most important for us to fulfill and then go fulfill them. Desire satisfaction theory is not preference hedonism, Although they sound the same, while desire satisfaction theory appeals to all our preferences about our lives, preference hedonism appeals to only preferences about those features of our lives that we know about. Now, Parfit gives this example. Suppose that I strongly want not to be deceived by other people. On preference hedonism, it will be better for me if I believe that I am not being deceived. It will be irrelevant if my belief is false, since this makes no difference to my state of mind. On the success theory, or desire satisfaction theory, it will be worse for me if my belief is false. However, Parfit raised some major issues with this type of theory of well-being. A big question uh, desire satisfaction theory presents is, should we focus on fulfilling the current desires we have or focusing on all the desires we may have? For example, we may have the desire to be a professional artist one day, but if we desire to avoid going to art lessons in the present, we will have to decide whether to go for the immediate desire and not become an artist, or the longer term one and go to class. Also, what if the only thing we desire is to be a great artist one day, but this happens only after we die? Does this make our life better since our desire was technically met, but we weren't conscious to experience it? 
So far, we've been focusing on subjective theories of well-being. And that means that only you get to decide what's best for your life. But on the other hand, perhaps there are things in the world that are objectively good for us to have or experience. For example, uh, there could there be maybe a list of things like obtaining knowledge, having friends, feeling safe, having meaning in life that when experienced make everyone's life better no matter what? Well, this is called the objective list theory. Objective list theories are theories of well-being that list objective things that are intrinsically good for people when experienced or obtained. Now, today there is no agreed upon uh, one objective list. An example of an objective list theory Parfit gave was perhaps things like moral goodness, rational activity, development of abilities, having children, and being a good parent, knowledge, awareness of true beauty are good for all people no matter what. The thing that separates objective list theories of well-being from all the other theories of well-being is the idea of attitude independence. Or simply put, that particular things are good or bad for people, whether or not they have any pro or con attitude toward them. If a philosopher says that getting a job will make my life better, regardless of how much I want to play video games in my mom's basement, why well, ought to get a job if I want a higher quality of well-being? Okay, so those are the three main theories of well-being uh, we have today. So which one is best? Well, let me know what you think. Uh, there's a lot more to explore in each of these, so I'll be doing that in some more videos coming up, and then deciding which one is most logically sound and the best philosophy for living the good life. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. That helps it rank in the algorithm. And subscribe for more videos using the link in the description. Make sure to uh, turn on the notification bell to receive updates uh, when the new videos come out. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.